Calgary, a PhD student is creating a database of every indigenous woman and girl who has either gone missing or been killed in Canada and the US. Since 1900, with plans to use the data to craft an atlas mapping the crisis across North America. Anita Lucchese, a PhD candidate at the University of Lethbridge, wanted to include rates of missing and murdered Indigenous women in her now-completed MA thesis, but came to the conclusion that accurate numbers don't exist. University of Lethbridge PhD candidate Anita Lucchese decided to create a database that lists cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women in Canada and the U.S. After struggling to find concrete statistics, University of Lethbridge School of Graduate Studies before becoming a PhD student, Lucchese taught at Blackfeet Community College in Browning, Mont, and attended workshops for faculty who work at minority-serving institutions in the U.S. Anita Lucchese, that's when she decided to track cases of missing and murdered Indigenous women, MMIW, across the continent herself, I found that no one had a good working number, and then when I tried to pull all the lists together, all of the lists were different and didn't match, Lucchese said. They were very disorganized, so that's how the database got started. I was filling that responsibility to create that resource, although her database is separate from her academic work, Lou Casey, plans to use the data she collects in her dissertation to develop the atlas. Article continued below, mapping can be a healing process, it can be a process of reclaiming and reiterating sovereignty and it can be a really powerful way to tell stories about violence, said Lou Casey, a cartographer by trade. Read more. Symbol of Indigenous Healing Looking for Permanent Home in Calgary Medical Residents Learn to Braid Indigenous Healing in Western Medicine Lawyer with Missing and Murdered Indigenous Women Inquiry Resigns, Citing Government Interference The idea is to have Native community members, I'll be hosting mapping workshops in different communities, and Native people actually come in and draft maps themselves that tell stories about this issue, so while together they can be compiled into an atlas, she said she hopes her project will give community members a platform to share stories about their missing or murdered loved loved ones in a way that's meaningful, healing and empowering. Article continued below the Native Women's Association of Canada documented 582 MMIW cases in the country between 2005 and 2010, while a 2014 RCMP report noted 1,181 cases between 1980 and 2012. In 2015, the Mounties updated their figure, stating that 32 more Indigenous women had been killed within RCMP jurisdictions between 2013 and 2014. In the last three years, Lou Casey has logged approximately 2,700 missing and murdered women continent-wide, more than half of whom were in Canada. To find these cases, Lou Casey pursues data collection by any means necessary. She has filed public records requests with law enforcement agencies, scanned decades and decades of archived newspapers and, most importantly, she said, she's visited communities and spoken with affected families, there's been a lot of support from the communities to make this project happen and to see it grow, Lou Casey said. Family members reach out to me to make sure their family member is included, before becoming a PhD student. Lucchese taught at Blackfeet Community College in Browning, Mont, and attended workshops for faculty who work at minority-serving institutions in the U.S. Anita Lucchese, of all the families who have approached Lucchese, only one lost relative was already listed in the database, she said. It can be easy for, the families, to feel like they're not being heard or like they've been forgotten. It's been a relief to them to know that someone else is remembering their loved ones, Lou Casey explained. According to the doctoral student, it's easier to find MMIW cases in Canada than in the United States, it's more visible in Canada than it is in the US, but that's because they have the inquiry and more organizing there, she said. Lou Casey said she has noticed that this heightened visibility has resulted in more outward racism targeting missing and murdered Indigenous women. My experience living in Canada is that Indigenous people are more visible in general than they are in the States, Lou Casey said. In Canada, when a Native woman dies it's an excuse to bring out all of the racist stereotypes about addicts and sex workers and people who just can't function.
Whereas in the US, when a native woman dies, they don't even care to ask if she was native, much less put it in a news article. Lucchese's supervisor, Jan Newberry, a professor of anthropology at the University of Lethbridge, praised Lucchese for her ability to map loss, it's a way for indigenous communities to share and recognize, and to be seen, said Newberry. She added that sometimes, research seems extractive because you come, take information and leave, but Lou Casey works hard to engage with indigenous communities from start to finish, her connections are just horrific, Newberry said. The project also has personal and spiritual implications for Lou Casey, who is American and identifies as Southern Cheyenne, I'm a survivor of violence, and that violence almost killed me, she said. If I had become one of the women on this list, I would want my story to have meaning and to be part of the effort to make sure it doesn't happen to other women and girls, she added. That she hopes the spirits of missing and murdered indigenous women and girls will rest if they sense communities are acknowledging them, I believe there is so much grief and unresolved trauma in those spirits, Lucchese said. If they haven't been able to move on properly, they get stuck here, they get anxious or they are hurting, if they can see that they're being remembered, and they're being honored, maybe it helps them feel a little bit better. As far as an end date for Lucchese's work, there isn't one, I think this is something I'll end up doing for decades because I don't feel like I can stop anytime soon, Lucchese said. I hope that I can do justice to violence by doing the best I can to continue to build the database. Anya Zaledziowski is a reporter, photographer for Star Metro Calgary. Follow her on Twitter, at Anya Zaleds.